Nicola asks, what conditions should the ideal wallet meet? Um, Nicola, that's a question that can only be answered if I understand what your particular requirements are. There is no perfect wallet for everyone. Wallets serve different purposes better than other purposes, and it really depends on what you're trying to achieve. It's a bit like asking the question, what's better, a Ferrari or an agricultural tractor? And the question really depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to go really, really fast on a very, very flat surface um, in a closed track, then the Ferrari will perform better for your needs. But if you're trying to pull four tons through a muddy field, the Ferrari will be pretty useless for that task. So what is the ideal wallet? The ideal wallet uh, really depends on what you're trying to achieve. You have to find the right balance of security, privacy, ease of use for your technical level of skill, um, cutting edge features uh, or capabilities that you're particularly interested in, such as the ability to manage fees well through replace by fee and child pays for parent um, or fee estimation technologies, um, the, the ability to implement various new technologies like segregated witness and patch 32 addresses. All of those things might be considerations for you, or they might not be considerations at all. And what you're looking for is something that can make payments reliably, quickly, efficiently, and without much explanation. So um, can't really answer that question in the general. Um, Kira Lee asks, with all of the new tokens, coins, and changes to existing coins, upgrades such as SegWit, what is your view of, on the ability of wallets to keep up? Uh, Kira Lee, this is uh, actually a good question. There, it is not that easy, and we're seeing that adoption of new technologies is primarily restricted at the point of the user interface. And the reason for that is because a new technology that is introduced into the blockchain or infrastructure can't actually be used by the end users until it's part of a wallet's user interface. And unfortunately, it's not that easy to do that. You have to design the user interface, you have to make sure that the user experience is intuitive and consistent and that the metaphors and user interface modalities you use um, enhance security rather than undermining security by um, creating expectations for the users that um, are intuitive and secure. So all of those things make it very difficult for wallets to keep up because user interface design is not easy. And when a technology is launched at the infrastructure level, then it takes a lot of work for wallets to introduce that successfully to users. Uh, we see that also with exchange interfaces, not just wallets, um, and, and many other environments that involve a lot of users. Because um, new features as they are introduced will also generate a lot of customer service requests and help desk requests, and the people at the help desk and customer service desk also need to be trained in the new technology. So we see a gap, uh, and this gap can be anywhere from six months to two years between a new technology being introduced at the blockchain level and it actually being usable by a majority of users at the user interface level. Tim asks, what will it take to provide simplicity for mass adoption in terms of signing up with an exchange, using various kinds of wallets, purchasing altcoins, etc.? Is the interface going to be centralized? The interface is already centralized. And in fact, mass adoption, if mass adoption comes from signing up with a centralized and custodial service, then uh, the decentralized digital currency experiment has failed. Um, a centralized custodial exchange is not a decentralized digital currency. It's one thing to use that as an on-ramp so that you can familiarize, f pardon me, familiarize yourself with this technology and also perhaps um, obtain your first cryptocurrencies. But the risks of custodial systems, the surveillance and identification required, the possibility of that information being used against you, especially in coercive, despotic, and corrupt regimes, 
is very, very high. And these are not decentralized systems. So mass adoption at the expense of decentralization is completely pointless. If what you want is mass adoption, uh, then PayPal is probably a better option um, than decentralized digital currencies. Mass adoption does not matter as much as providing a true alternative to the existing systems. and That means maintaining decentralization.